working. Yes, that camera's on. Welcome to the Funk Cafe. I know you're saying, what's going on? Different look. Well, this is what I call Studio A of the Funk Cafe, which is the far right of the back wall to the Funk Cafe, where I house a lot of my CDs and stuff. But, nevertheless, you're seeing another side of the Funk Cafe. You might have seen part of it because I kind of sectioned it off and I'm calling this Studio A, the middle where you always see me is Studio B. Then when I started a movie um, channel, but then I had to kind of shut it down. But I'm going to get that up and running again because my co-host got busy and we had to shut it down for a while. But I've been talking and maybe we'll get that up and running again. And that was Studio C, if you ever saw. Uh, we only did like uh, five videos, and uh, that was it. It was called Minorities at the Movies. But with that said, I was doing like what we all do, like over the long winter or something like that, spring cleaning. And doing spring cleaning, you know, you get the moving stuff around and like, man, I forgot about this box and this and that. However, you might pack up stuff, move it when you're not using it as much as you used to. But with that said, I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a video of, I guess, me. The Funk Cafe, as far as where I come from, as far as collecting and liking the stuff I collect. Because I collect a lot of stuff. I collect a lot of stuff. Basically, to me, is I see something I like. If I can afford it, I'll get it. And because the collection is for your own personal uh, thing. At least it should be. I collect stuff because I like it. What if it's something like a poster or a painting or something that I like to look at from time to time. And that's what it should be for everybody. I don't collect for nobody but for me. And that should be for everybody as well. Um, so when I was spraying cleaning and just moving stuff i just came up with this idea of the just kind of show some stuff where what i collect and pretty much as far as music over the decades of collecting so with that said let me start with how many y'all know what these are If you said eight tracks, you're right. Eight tracks. Got a ton of them. Got eight track tape players. My father loved eight tracks. This is Stilly Dan. Herbie Hancock. Feet don't fail me now. Of course, this was Asia. And Shaka Khan. Shaka. First solo album. Eight tracks is a thing that <laughs> most people say it's the worst of probably the formats I'm going to show because I'm going to show different formats. And at the time, it was considered high tech. It was. I mean, my father had a ton of them. And it got handed down to me. I got eight track players. I can still play these. Hook them up to your system. It is what it is. It's no different than vinyl. Like people today think vinyl is like, oh, it's, you know, sometimes you get a record that's 
you know, got a little snap, crackle, and pop going on. He's like, oh, that sounds terrible. But to us, if you grew up on it, you're used to it. So it sounds good. You buy a brand new record, it's clean and everything. Now they got the sonic cleaning. It takes away a lot of that uh, snap, crackle, pop. But it's still a format that you grew up on and you like. I grew up on eight tracks. I, I tell younger people that I run into in the record stores, I say, you know what? I feel like I was born at the right time to experience so much. Because a lot of the younger people that I talk to, I mean, they know CD, then streaming, basically. And I started telling about all the other kind of stuff. And actually, they, they, they're, they're fascinated. They're fascinated about that. You know, so it, it's cool. You get some uh, people that's fascinated, young people, and then you got some just don't care. But that's how it is with everything in life. It ain't just going to interest you or it doesn't. But that was eight tracks. Then I tell you what, in my eight track air, uh, as far as uh, I came into contact, you know, with, you know, my people, parents, uncles, who knows what these are? Yes. Real to real tape. Real to real tape. And actually, you can go to your record store and you can actually buy these just and they were expensive too back then you can actually buy that so this this was Marvin Gaye I want you the soundtrack to shy by the Hayes and just I got a ton of HRs got a ton of these as well I just pulled a few the Supremes I hear Symphony And Earth, Wind, and Fire, I am. You know, just fantastic. These sound great, too. Sound great. Really sound great. Uh, let's open OK right here. Yeah. And of course, I had the machines that play it. Everything I'm about to show, I got the machines that play them. Got the machines that play these. The real works. They got the eight tracks. You know. Then moving right along. Yes, cassettes. Need a baker. Ton of these. Ton of these. Freddie Jackson. Uh oh, Family Reunion, the OJs. Sister Sledge, we are family. Soundtrack, Wait Until It's Hell. Just pulled some. Queen Latifah, Nature of a Sister. Just great, just great. Cassettes. Cassettes was on a, on a, on a tear. I mean, A tracks definitely fell out. You know, along with Real to Real as well. But a lot of people really wasn't buying Real to Real like that because of the high price. Even now, you try to buy some used Real to Real psh, through the roof. Through the roof. Okay. 45s were a big thing. This is Tina Turner, Private Dancing. Dancer. Taste the Honey. Sukiyaki, 45s for something else. Yellow, oh yeah, ball, ball. Whitney Houston, okay, saving all my love for you. And I pulled a Remy Jackson, Centipede. Written and produced by the late, great Michael Jackson, which was her brother. So that's 45s. And... Pretty much everybody know what a 45 looks like, but 45. And 
Of course, you know, you got a turntable, you can play a 45. You know. But the real to real, gotta have a machine that plays down. Eight track, gotta have a machine that plays down. Okay, we're gonna stay in the vinyl department. 12 inches. Oh, if you was a DJ, this was a gold mine I had. I just pulled some because I was listening to the, some of these. Uh, why don't we fall in love? A Marie. Great, great, great 12 inch. Madonna, don't tell me. This is a two vinyl. A lot of mixes. You know, the, the 12 inch gave you mixes, instrumentals, acapellas, all that. And we got some kind of lover, Jody Watley. The 12 inch disc that just gave you the different mixes off the albums that you did. And uh, he was DJing or just playing party music, doing parties. These were great to have. 12 inch mixes. Great, great, you know, vinyl, just like the, just like the LP, just like a, you know, an album, but it was just one song with a bunch of different mixes on it, such as here, this is the extended version, which is 7 minutes and 18 seconds, then the flip side, you had uh, instrumental. And on this particular one, you had the four-minute dub version of it. So that was just some of the great stuff that if you was DJing or just like the di uh, different mixes of a song that you like, the 12-inch was definitely for you to have. Then... We went here, just pulled out some albums. This is Santana. Now this is a quadraphonic album here. And you had to have a quadraphonic receiver and you had to have the speakers and the turntable and the cartridge to have that. This was like surround sound back then. It was like surround sound. Actually, that deck right there is a quad uh, deck, and I have a quad turntable as well. But um, nevertheless, you can still just play these on standard uh, stereo, and uh, sounds great. They had a special label. You know, this one was Gold by Columbia. You know, a lot of people were used to that Columbia, that red, but Quadraphonics, they did gold. I have a lot of different Quadraphonic LPs by different artists. And that's cool. Brother Johnson's Vinyl LP. And I pulled a, I was listening, these are the ones I was listening to, and Quincy Jones, right there, sounds. Got that hit, stuff like that. And the back up. So, that's the vinyl LP. It, what I'm showing, like I say, is collection of stuff that I collect in the music. Then we move on to CDs. Everybody know, the majority of my collection, I always have a lot of uh, female artists. It is what it is. We all like something special, don't we? This is Cut Close. This group was uh, Key Sweat. X Ex-Girlfriends. This group was uh, put together by Full Force. That's the name you don't hear anymore. Full Force. And Floor Tree. And another reason why I'm showing these two is because 
these are CDs that you probably, unless some miracle happen, that you're going to actually just get these pressed on vinyl. You know, I talk to my sister, um, Eve, all the time, and this is one we fiending for. We fiending for both of them, though, but hey, you can start with this one on vinyl. Love to have this on vinyl. Ex-girlfriend. I know I got a couple 12 inches off this uh, CD on vinyl. Cut close. I love to have that on vinyl as well. Other CDs that definitely I would love to have on vinyl. Melody, it's so much. Melody Fiona, The Bridge. Whew. Man, you, you don't hear much from her anymore. She did a couple CDs. Vivian Green, oh man, she got a bunch of work that definitely needs to be on vinyl. I mean, she just a, a soulful She's like a soulful, jazzy, neo-soul type uh, singer that just, man, everything she put out would just melt your eardrums. Speaking of floretry, Marsha Ambrosia, like to have all her stuff come out on vinyl, LP. Brandy, I have a couple of Brandies on vinyl. You know, I think I got, I got Full Moon, Never Say Never. Uh, got her first uh, self-titled Brandy. I think I got another album. Uh, I know I got the best of Brandy. You know, they got re-released on vinyl. You know, but I would like to have all Brandy stuff on vinyl. 211. I would love to have that on vinyl. She did drop her last album on vinyl. That was fantastic. Fantastic. They had that on vinyl. Mm. Ooh, that's good. The hat out on vinyl. So, with that said, we were right along. Oh, some more CDs. This is some soundtracks that I... Now, this needs to be released on vinyl. Even though they did put it on vinyl, now I do have uh, a promo of this on vinyl. Just came in the black sleeve with the sticker glitter on it. Now it is copies out there with this cover. And they're going for $350, $325. Cheapest one I see was $325 at my local record store. <laughs> they can keep that bad boy. But somebody gonna bump uh get the head bump probably buy it. And no, I learned my lesson almost buying something at a high price only just holding my having patience and it actually dropped and i i think i told that story once before it was a thug life and uh all eyes on me and i saw them online together if i would have bought both of them online on ebay i would have been paying pretty much almost four hundred dollars including shipping then you know, I just kind of forgot about it, I guess. And one day, walked into my local record store. And for some, I mean, I don't know. Walked in my local record store. There they were in the front, new arrivals. Thug Life and, and y'all probably bought them too. And uh, Me Against the World walked out paying under $50 for both those records. Can you imagine? So, kind of learned my lesson to be patient. And I'm definitely going to be patient. Like I said, I do have it on vinyl. It just don't have a beautiful cover like this. But, hey, it's on vinyl nevertheless. Five Heartbeats. Five Heartbeats. Great movie, by the way. And now, this is The Preacher's Wife, Whitney Houston. And it got that lenticular... See that? Oh, yeah. Going on now. CDs. Other CDs that, man, I would love to have on vinyl. I would love to have Tita Marie. 
Sapphire. These are the later Tina Marie albums that Congo Square that are terrific. I mean, whoo. Tina Marie at her best. I mean, it, it, it's great. She's on Universal Cash Money on this one. She was moving around towards the end, looked like. And then here, she's on Stacks. This one's actually on Stacks. Tim Marie was definitely out there doing her thing. Yes. Shaka Khan. Man, I love it. Had this on vinyl. Funk this. This was uh, like her comeback album because she was away for a while. Then she dropped this. And then the last thing she dropped was, uh, if I could pull it. Oh, man, I'm, I'm right here on it. No, not that one. Uh, I might have been playing it, but I don't even see it right now. Might have been playing it, because I don't, I, don't, I don't see it here. But, uh, oh, wait a minute. Hello, happiness. There it is. And she did drop this on vinyl as well, which I have. So, that's cool. That is cool. Now, that's what I collect as far as Music, you know, 12 inches have a ton of, albums have a ton of, CDs I have a ton of, eight tracks I have a ton of, can still play, cassettes I have a ton of, 45s, ton of them, real to real tapes, a ton of them. And I enjoy playing each and every one of those formats to this day, you know. I would take it, this Shaq Khan track is sticking in there. Even though I got this on CD, vinyl, cassette, eight track, I would still plug this in. Because just like when people say, you're still playing them old things, which people call vinyl, which we all love, same thing. If you got the means to play this, I mean, I'm looking, I should have had my VHS tapes up here as well. And Beta, which I still have a VHS machine and a Beta machine and some movies on those formats as well. Now, before we get to what I'm about to show there, I'm going to roll back a little bit because I didn't get no uh, VHS or beta tapes. I didn't want the table to be all full. But I did laser disc. It's a movie on a big old disc, like a DVD, Blu-ray. You know, it plays a movie. So I thought I'd share and show this. I mean, and he packs this stuff very well as well. Here's the booklet. They had like limited uh, box sets, just like they do our records of uh, the laser disc. Laser disc came out so expensive, and I think that was part of the downfall too. Because I think if they would have priced it for the working person, because a lot of my laser disc baby came after it pretty much failed. Because then I could, you know. Going to half price books and everything, you see them up there, three, four, five dollars or whatever. You know, that, that was the disc right there. Same size as the LP record. And this had uh, three discs in it. Got the head special feature discs and all that. Yeah. Three discs. Here's the other two. Came in this nice box. Just 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 like our vinyl records would have came. And a nice box set. 
And this is Ellie. And I, yes, I had a player to play this laser disc. And I have a ton of these laser discs because now you can go to fleet markets everywhere, pretty much pick them up. Moving right along. Got this on DVD, but I didn't pull a DVD because I thought it'd be more exciting to show the laser disc. Because DVD is under a Blu-ray. Same size disc. Blu-ray is just better quality. DVD is like 480. This is like 1080. So the quality. But sometimes it depends on what studio. The work you put in, making it more in-depth HD. So... Belly, to watch this. That's why I got this out because I watched it on Blu ray because they released it also on 4K. And I was comparing them. It, yes, this is an uptick from the DVD. And this is an uptick from the Blu ray. Plus, the soundtrack is different and the visual is different. They got something called uh, Adobe Vision that gives it more depth, more clarity, more richness to the picture, and Atmos, which is a sound that just all around. You know, if you got the system, you can hear things that above your head. That if somebody was up in a balcony talking, you can actually hear that. That's the Adobe Atmos. It's just a uh, more superior surround sound. Adobe Atmos. And this is fantastic. And that's the 4K of Belly. Well, I um, think I'm going to have to put all this up now. But I just thought it'd be interesting to make a video and show the different things that go on here at the Funk Cafe. And I hope you enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed it. I'm not going to enjoy putting all this back up, but I just thought it'd be fun to do a video and check in. I'm your man DJ Funk, and you know that camera's on him. Always welcome here in the Funk Cafe. I hope you like the different backdrop here. And uh, anytime the camera comes on, I'm going to invite you in. So until then, I'm your man DJ Funk. Everybody have a good day, and you know what I'm about to say. I'm out.